Now let's tell you about the Red Sea crisis. It is escalating. Yesterday, the U.S. drew blood. American forces killed 10 Houthi rebels. Now the Houthis, as you would know, are based in Yemen. They've been attacking ships going through the Red Sea. They say this is in solidarity with the people of Gaza. That's why the Houthis are attacking. But they're attacking all kinds of vessels, even those which are unrelated to the conflict. And the same happened this weekend. The Houthis targeted a cargo ship. It's called the Mers Hangzhou, a ship registered to Singapore, operated by the Danish shipping giant Maersk. Now, this ship has no ties to Israel, but the Houthis attacked it anyway. The raid began on Saturday. The ship was targeted with missiles. One missile was fired from the Yemeni mainland. It hit the ship, but did not cause too much damage. There were no casualties, and the ship could still sail. So it continued along the Red Sea. The ship kept moving. Then it was fired on again. Two more missiles were fired, aimed at the same ship on Saturday night. They did not hit their target, though, because these missiles were intercepted by the Americans. You see, right after the first attack, the first missile attack, the ship had sent out an SOS, a distress call. And this call was answered by the U.S., by one of their most potent naval vessels, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier. It responded to the SOS call from the cargo ship. Now, an aircraft carrier does not travel alone. It moves in a fleet along with destroyers and carriers. So the entire fleet went to rescue the cargo ship. And a destroyer intercepted the Houthi missiles, and the aircraft carrier launched helicopters to protect the ship. Now, the missiles may have failed, but the carrier was still under attack by Houthi militants on small boats. The Houthis attacked the American aircraft carrier. The Houthis had sent four boats to intercept and board the merchant ship, the cargo ship. They wanted to intercept and board it, so they sent four boats. But they were not prepared to deal with American firepower. Reports say the Houthis were only carrying small arms. But when they saw the Americans, they still attacked. They fired at the incoming American choppers. And that's when the U.S. fired back. The American enemy forces attacked three boats belonging to the Yemeni naval forces, which led to the martyrdom and loss of ten members of the naval forces. Three of the Houthi boats were destroyed. The fourth one retreated and managed to escape. The Houthis have vowed that there will be a response. The American enemy bears the consequences of this crime, and its repercussions. The Americans may have a target on their backs now, from the Houthis and their allies, Iran, because Iran, too, has sent a ship, a ship to the Red Sea, a frigate called the Al Bors. Now, this ship is old. It was commissioned back in 1971, but it has been modernized, and it can pack a punch. This is likely to complicate things in the Red Sea and make it harder for the U.S. to secure this vital shipping lane. Even though on paper, the Albors cannot match the USS Eisenhower and its fleet. The Eisenhower was initially sent to this area, to the Mediterranean, when the Israel-Hamas war broke out. It was supposed to be a statement, a show of force. The carrier and its fleet are more than a match for the Houthis. But shipping companies are still worried. Take Maersk, for instance. It had resumed shipping through the Red Sea last week, but now it has decided to stop using this route again. It needs more security and safety guarantees. And the U.S. has been trying to reassure shipping firms, trying to tell them that they've got the Red Sea covered. But one aircraft carrier may not be enough to protect everyone. So the U.S. has also formed a coalition to protect the region. It's called Operation Prosperity Guardian. About 20 countries are participating in this mission. Fun fact, about half of them have not even volunteered their names. They don't want to be publicly known as supporting the U.S., which seriously complicates matters. And Iran's entry into the Red Sea makes things worse. It has turned the already volatile area into a powder keg. And all this won't help reassure the shipping companies. Meanwhile, India, too, is stepping up its naval patrols. India has deployed more ships to the Arabian Sea. India now has four destroyers and a frigate patrolling the crucial waterways. It will also have aircraft and drones conducting aerial surveillance. 
The goal is clear, to gather intelligence and render assistance to merchant vessels. But India won't be shooting down raiders. It will ensure that no one gets hurt working in tandem with the US-led mission to bring stability to the Red Sea, to ensure that this key trade route remains open. Because a crisis in the Red Sea will hurt everyone.